In this video, we are going to build some desktop applications using PowerShell Universal Desktop. It allows you to create desktop applications with PowerShell that integrate with a bunch of features of the Windows desktop. So we'll go through those various features and we'll also um, integrate with some user interfaces that you can use to create some cool tools. So I am running PowerShell Universal Desktop. You can see it looks a little bit different than in the browser. Um, it is using WebView 2.2 uh, uh, and um, it pretty much renders our PowerShell Universal admin console and we run the PowerShell Universal server to integrate with this. What's cool though is it's running as your um, current user it installs into a non-admin location so you don't need admin privileges to install this and then you can kind of integrate your, your tools directly into your desktop. So on the left hand side you can see that we have a new node for desktop features and those include file associations, hotkeys, protocol handlers, and system events. Um, so we'll kind of go through those. The other thing that this integrates with uh, are our user interfaces. So we have dashboards and pages. And what's kind of cool about when you launch, um, when you launch uh, user interfaces from this view is it actually pops it up in its own little uh, client window without actually starting like a web browser or anything like that. It's actually just its own little uh, web view 2.0 uh, window that looks very much like a desktop application. You'll also notice that we kind of integrate with the um, the tray icon here and you can open in VS Code and you can close this and open it up later, that kind of thing. So the first thing that I'm going to actually show off are file associations. So a file association allows you to associate a file with PowerShell Universal and it will call a script based on the extension. So I actually have a script defined here. So I have my file association script. And we look at that, it accepts a single parameter. So this is automatically provided, which is the uh, file path of the file that was actually clicked. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call get content uh, for that file, convert from JSON, and then I'm going to write host the JSON. So I actually have a um, myfile.ps3 right here. And it just has some JSON that has a single property that says say, and then hello world. So what I want to do is go to my file association section, click create new file association. I want it to be .ps3. Uh, and I'm going to select my file association uh, script. So you can see here it's asking for the file, but it's not required. And we're going to pass it in automatically. So if I click OK, now I have uh, this file associ associated with PowerShell Universal. And it's going to automatically launch your PowerShell script when you open a file of that type. So if I actually go here, you can see I have uh, my file, that PS3. And if I double click that, you're not going to see anything happen. But if we go back to PowerShell Universal um, and we go to jobs, you can see the file association was just run a few seconds ago. And if we open that, you can see it said hello world. So it got the file name, it parsed the JSON, and then it printed out using write host. So you can do all kinds of things with this. You know, you can associate any kind of file, process it how you like, you can launch other apps, that kind of thing. All right, now let's talk a little bit about hotkeys. So hotkeys allow you to um, bind uh, Windows hotkeys to um, scripts. So if you look at the create hotkey button here, uh, we have keys. So you can select a key like S, and then you can select a modifier like Alt. And then from there, you can specify a script. So I'll select my hotkey script. And here, I actually have a pages variable. And I'm going to say my services page. So that was that uh, dashboard that I showed earlier. And we'll say OK. So now my hotkey is bound to Alt-S. And if I hit Alt-S, you're going to see that it actually pops up my services. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that even if you leave PowerShell Universal, this is a global hotkey. So if I hit Alt-S, it's actually going to pop that up anywhere I am. So uh, it's just going to start multiple versions of that every time I press that hotkey. And the way that that particular um, script works, if we go to scripts, uh, hotkey, I accept a single uh, parameter, which is the uh, page parameter. And then I'm using our new commandlet, which is show PSU page. And this is just for uh, PowerShell Universal Desktop. And the idea being that you can put this in any one of your scripts, and then it will automatically show the page um, based on the URL you provide. So I, I just provided the name of the page, so it just assumes that it's being run by PowerShell Universal. Uh, if you include a full URL, it'll actually um, point you to that as well. All right, so the next thing I want to look at uh, is protocol handlers. So a protocol handler allows you to define a custom protocol. So 
you may or may not know what this is, but like a lot of things use them. So Zoom uses them and WebEx or um, VS Code. And the idea is that the custom protocol is typically launched from a website and it causes a local application to run. So if you have the custom protocol handler um, defined, you could have a link on a website, it would launch that uh, application on the user's desktop and they'd have to like, you know, allow it to happen. Um, but once that happens, what is it actually going to do inside PowerShell Universal is run a script. So I have a uh, protocol handler script here, uh, just called protocol. And what this does is it gets this automatic variable or parameter called protocol URI. And the protocol URI uh, includes the protocol itself. So what I'm doing is I'm stripping off the protocol. So if you can imagine the protocol will be something like PSU slash slash um, my page or something like that. And I'm just trying to get the page name. So again, I'm going to show a page uh, if I click a um, protocol link. And I'm going to click the protocol link from a web browser and it's going to launch a window from PowerShell Universal locally. Um, so I need to register my protocol handler. So if I go to desktop protocol handlers, uh, I want the PSU protocol and I want to launch the uh, protocol script. So I don't have to fill in protocol URI because it's automatically going to be filled in. And I'm going to click uh, OK. So now I have my protocol defined. Um, and now, whoops, I'm going to go to a web browser. So this is outside PowerShell Universal uh, Desktop. And it's just my uh, launch um, my launch page. So you can imagine this is just a link that you could have. You could have a bunch of links that launch different tools and that kind of thing. Uh, but I just have this launch my page. And if you look at the bottom left corner, you can actually see the URL there is PSU uh, colon slash slash services. So what that's actually going to do is it's going to launch my uh, services uh, dashboard. So let's go to the browser and we'll click that. And it's going to ask me uh, whether or not I want to open this. And if you allow this, it won't ask you anymore. And it's kind of similar to what Zoom does. And now you can see it launched a local application. So this web application could be running somewhere else. It doesn't have to be running on your local machine. I have it running on my local machine, but this kind of integration allows you to kind of direct a user to launch a local application. They'd already have to have it installed, but um, this allows you to you know, trigger that locally. All right, so now let's look at uh, system events. So a system event is actually currently just a WMI event. So if you have used, uh, I think it's register sim instance event or something, um, that commandlet will allow you to uh, subscribe to system level events that happen on your Windows machine and then run PowerShell scripts. So this is a similar concept except it's integrated into uh, PowerShell Universal. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a system event that uh, listens for PowerShell processes starting, and then I'm going to show a burnt toast notification. So if we go to my automation scripts, I have a system event already set. And if I go here, you can see I have a new burnt toast notification. Um, and I'm just going to say PowerShell started, and then I'm going to list out the target instance. So that target instance will have properties like the uh, process ID and the, the name of the process and all kinds of stuff. Um, and that's passed in automatically from our system event integration. So if we go back to system events, I'm going to create a new event. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, PowerShell started. And the event type is create. So when, you know, there's lots of like classes you could subscribe to here. Um, and the pretty much the categories of events are create, delete, modify. For process, a create is like it started the process. A delete is like it deleted the process, and I'm not really sure what a, mod a modify of a process is, but. All right, so now um, let's set our uh, condition here. So the condition is uh, like a WMI um, selector. So I have that in another document, so I don't have to try to remember, but uh, I think I might actually have to fix this up. It's got some extra back ticks in it. All right, so what is, this is doing is it's saying the target instance is a Win32 process, and the target instance name is pwsh.exe. And when that happens, I want to uh, do my system event. And again, you can see the, the parameters listed here, but I don't need to supply it. It'll be supplied automatically. Click OK. And now I'm listening to um, system events for PowerShell starting. 
So now if I were to like start a Windows terminal and my default shell is um, PWSH, what you're gonna see is a burnt toast notification. So what that did is partially universal, subscribed to the instance creation event of Win32 process and filtered on PWSH. And then it invoked, um, it invoked our PowerShell script inside PowerShell Universal to send our burnt toast notification. And because this is actually running as um, my current user, it just pop, pops it up like any other PowerShell script would. So there's lots of opportunities here. Uh, we'll be adding a couple more features to the desktop section. Uh, we're looking at things like desktop shortcuts and pretty much anything that's in PS Commander right now. We're going to start integrating into this desktop section here. So definitely go out and give this a try. Uh, all these features of the desktop edition are free. Um, you'll be limited to 25 jobs. That's the only thing that you need a license for. Um, but you can create user interfaces, you can hook up all your uh, you know, hotkeys and file associations uh, inside PowerShell Universal Desktop. You will need the current um, 3.0 Beta 7 version to uh, use the functionality that I showed off here today.